Hey everybody, Father Peter here. Look who I have. Can you believe these other two Brady Bunch screens I've got here? I've got Father Justin, I've <laughs> got Reverend Elizabeth. Uh, and the three of us, uh, we are clergy here from St. Mark's, uh, are here today uh, to speak with you about the issues that we find in our spiritual and mental health. One of the things we often talk about is that Jesus said that uh, to love one another as I have loved you by this, the, disciple, the world will know that you are my disciples. We take that very seriously uh, in our world to, to be a community of love. And being a community of love means that we care for one another in love. And the care that we have for one another and amongst us all uh, takes the whole body to care for each other. But much of that care uh, does end up touching the clergy. So I've got Justin and Elizabeth here today to say a word about what it is that they're experiencing personally and what it is that they're experiencing amongst all of us uh, as the body of Christ. So Justin, uh, we're all part of the same business. We share all kinds of things, but uh, we also do have areas that we have particular responsibility. And we, we say that you're in charge of pastoral care. What a heavy duty thing that is to say. So I wonder if you might just say a word to us about what it is that you're seeing in the pastoral care world. I totally, thanks Father Peter. Uh, you know, the first thing I would say is the people of St. Mark's are incredible. <laughs> uh, you're all such incredibly gracious and strong people. And so I, I, I am in the conversations that I, I know all three of us have, and certainly the ones that I have, I'm amazed by uh, the, the strength and the resilience uh, that uh, the people of the parish through what is undoubtedly an unprecedented and just wild and crazy event. Uh, that said, I think that um, I can feel, and I can feel in our, in my conversations anyway, with, uh, with the people of the parish that um, we're all getting tired. Mm. The, the pandemic is turning into something of a grind. I was on, um, I was on the, the weekly Zoom call with the confirmation students last night with Syrah, and uh, the, the confirmands are all basically um, eighth and ninth graders, and they were speaking about the fact that, you know, the schools in Connecticut are not going to go back in person. And um, they, were, they were remarking that their pandemic schedules had lost their novelty. Uh, you know, initially not having class was kind of cool, but now it's just a grind. It's just an ordinary, regular thing. And so repeatedly um, they would answer my request for them to tell me the high and the low of their week by just saying, well, my week didn't have a high or a low. It was just a pandemic week. And that's where I think we all, we all are. We're all like, we're all like my eighth graders. Um, and I think I'm in particular observing three kind of emotional reactions um, in myself and in others. Uh, I think we're all grieving for one thing. Uh, at the very least, we are grieving, as my therapist put it to me yesterday, the loss of our lifestyles, um, <laughs> the loss of being able to go to the grocery store and it be normal or going to see friends and family and it be normal. And we're just grieving the loss of the normal that we experienced three weeks ago. I think we're also grieving something even more than that. We're, we're grieving um, something which makes us, makes us human. Uh, human beings are social animals uh, made for each other, made for real and not just virtual hugs, <laughs> real and not just uh, virtual handshakes and so on. And uh, the loss of that physical connection really is something that takes a toll on us. And we have to grieve that as well as grieving the incredible number of deaths that, um, that our nation and our world has suffered and our community, including our community at St. Mark's. Um, you know, some related to COVID-19, many of which are not related to COVID-19 uh, most recently, but which are still incredibly, um, incredibly sad. And the fact that we're not able to, <laughs> the fact that our regular ways of gathering for worship uh, and to, uh, to mourn them is incredibly disruptive to us. Um, and in the mix of that too, we're, I think we're, we're not only grieving uh, what we've lost, but we're also anticipating having to grieve other things we're going to lose. So in the last couple of weeks, I've noticed the word if, creep into a lot of our conversations. Um, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it's not when we come back to church, it's if we come back to church. It's not when we go to the opera, it's if we go to the opera. It's not when do we go to a baseball game, it's if we go to a baseball game. Um, and I, I think that, you know, at one level, we're emotionally trying to prepare ourselves for the changes that are coming down the pike. And there undoubtedly are changes. Um, but I, I think that 
in my case anyway, I'm struggling not to mourn things which I may, in fact, in the end, not have to mourn. Uh, you know, there's a passage in the Gospels where um, Jesus says that today has enough trouble for, uh, for today. Um, and I kind of think we have enough grief for today. Uh, you know, asking ourselves to start to grieve all the things we worry we might lose uh, could be totally overwhelming. Um, the third thing that I'm observing is a lot of anger. Um, and this is, you know, anger not at any particular thing, or perhaps it's anger directed towards a particular thing. Um, we see a lot of this in our, in the public sphere, people who are frustrated with our political leaders, frustrated with community leaders, and so on. Uh, you see it in things like, um, I saw on Facebook, a sign from a protester in Hartford uh, the other day that said, uh, you know, hashtag COVID is fake or something like that. Um, and I think that anger of that sort is certainly present uh, in, in, our, uh, in our midst, but, but also anger that's harder to put one's finger on. Anger like what I felt this morning around 1030 when I was, I was playing my piano over here and I, I had to say, I just started to bang on the thing and I banged it so hard that I threw G above middle C completely out of tune. Uh, I didn't know my piano could get any more completely out of tune than it already was, but I'm telling you, it was. I don't know where this anger came from. I think it's just frustration building and building and building. The frustration of the grind, and it had to go somewhere. And I have to say, the piano is not a terrible place to put it. Um, I'm very concerned uh, about the other places, the other ways that we direct our anger, which are um, uh, even more destructive than me banging my piano out of tune. Um, in any case, I think you know we're we're both incredibly strong and resilient, but also we're cracking a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Well, wouldn't you know that G took the crack? That's uh, really quite something that, that, that G above C took it.